What's up everyone? It's Tokenizer back again. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Welcome back to my channel where I bring you guys deep analysis and news along with insights from the digital asset space. Today I wanted to go over a little bit of news about Quant Network and what's recently come out. Now, before I start, keep in mind that I'm not a financial advisor and therefore I don't give out any financial advice. The FA I give out stands for Fundamental Analysis, not Financial Advice. So take this all as entertainment and informational content, and maybe at best educational. But enough of that, let's get right into it. So for those of you who haven't seen yet, Quant is soon to integrate their QNT token to be available for payments for their licenses on their operating system overledger. And this is going to cost you about $100 if you're a retail developer or investor. And the biggest part of all this is that whether payments for the licenses are paid in fiat or QNT, the QNT equivalent will be converted and locked away for the duration of the license. And here we see that they're hinting a little bit at Overledger mainnet, possibly in March of 2022. Now, why should you care about all this? Well, let's say maybe as an example, there's 5,000 licenses. Now let's do a little bit of math. Let's say maybe out of the 5,000 hypothetical licenses, 70% are from corporations and the other 30% are just retail clients, which I think should be a pretty reasonable assumption since they're literally gearing their services and technology towards the big companies. So let's say out of the 3,500 corporate licenses, 35% of them are from big enterprises and the other 65% are from SME developers. Well, that's about 1.225 million from the large enterprise side and about 450,000 from SME developers, giving us a grand total of about 1.68 million. And let's just quickly add in the other 1,500 retail licenses from regular people like us who just want to use or maybe run a gateway on Overledger. There's another 150 grand there. Now, if we add all these numbers up real quick, we get 1.83 million and if we convert 1.83 million dollars into QNT we get about 9,318 quant taken out of circulation and this was made at the time of quant consolidating roughly around 195 dollars now this doesn't sound like all that much yet but keep in mind we're not even accounting for the amount of QNT that gets staked into gateways and also sucked out of circulation we're just accounting for the license fees right now. Along with the fact that we've just used a general estimate of about 5,000 aggregate licenses across the board. But if you've done your research on Quant, you should know that with the people they're working with, 5,000 licenses in the long term is quite a conservative number considering the fact that Sia, Amazon, Oracle, and many others are all gonna be integrating Overledger into their own respective fields in one way or another. Now we can't really do a calculation for all that like we just did, but I think you guys get the point. And keep in mind the lockup amount is based on a fiat amount, so the larger quant grows and in return the QNT token, it'll probably be less QNT locked up per license. While 9,000 tokens doesn't sound like all that much, quant is about 33% more scarce than Bitcoin is. And we all know Bitcoin ends at 21 million, whereas there's only 14.6 million quants out there. Add in tokens taken out of circulation. Well, for those of you who were here when quant was running up to 400, we were already seeing a little supply shock of about 1-2% to of quants left on exchanges. So just use your imagination a bit and imagine what adding all these other features and of course FOMO might do. I'm not here to say one coin is better than another or anything, but just the fact that QNT does have a lower supply than Bitcoin, along with just a little more utility. They've integrated MetaMask into their system overledger to make paying in QNT a seamless process, but we've got some more news too. I'm sure most of us here are used to the term ERC-20. It's basically any token built on Ethereum and is what we consider an ERC-20 token. So Quant's an ERC-20 token, along with a lot of other coins. And I mean a lot. 
And if you've interacted with any application on Ethereum at all, I'm sure you guys have seen the stupid amount of gas fees. Like just the other day, I was moving around like $200 and I paid like 80 bucks for it, I think, which I mean, it's just kind of bullshit. It's like, all right, you either get fucked in fees or just don't use the network at all. Well, Quant's got a solution to not just that, but of course, the interoperability between other distributed ledgers and networks. Since, well, if we take a look here, Quant's built their own standard for tokens on their platforms named QRC20. And I think this is going to be huge. So this is going to make it so that QRC20 tokens can be integrated through smart contracts and allow these tokens to follow the QRC20 standard rather than the costly ERC20 that we're all used to. But the biggest part of all this is now that these QRC20 tokens will be able to work between multiple distributed ledgers from different networks. So hypothetically, we could possibly soon see, for example, maybe Aave and ERC20 token being integrated into Solana's distributed ledger and their application being utilized on Solana. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And then if we dig a little deeper, we see that HSBC and IBM have also made a multi-ledger CBDC token that's interoperable with other distributed ledgers. And if we just kind of read through the highlights, hybrid cloud environment with multiple technologies. So like a universally interoperable operating system. Well, I haven't really heard of another interoperability solution like this besides from who else but Quant. Now, of course, this is all speculation, but if we read between the lines a bit, Gilbert did spend some time working as a securities program at HSBC. And while well, Quant's got like 80 NDAs or so. And another little interesting article talking about interoperable CBDCs, just back in late September, the BIS, so the Bank for International Settlements, had come out saying they're also working on building a multi-CBDC titled MCBDC. And what are overledger applications? MDAPs, right? And if we also take a look at this from Gemini, so we see quants being used by the IMF for CBDCs, and that's just unreal. Like being a solution for the IMF for this new financial railway of CBDCs. Another mention of multi-ledger tokens, just like the articles mentioned earlier. And of course, multi-ledger tokens will need MDAPs, multi-chain applications, which only overledger offers as far as I know. Now, I know that was a whole lot of speculating without too, too much evidence, but take a look at the bigger picture and take a quick read for yourself and ask yourself how similar to quant these solutions sound. And keep in mind, Overledger's technology is patented, so it's not like they can just copy their source code and make it theirs. So with CBDCs always in the headlines now and constantly being talked about, Quant is one of those cryptos that are going to be at the forefront of all this, where we transition from our legacy system into distributed ledger technology, where every transaction and every transfer is traceable on a blockchain. Look, I don't like the sound of that as much as the next person. I think privacy should be valued, but at the end of the day, if this is going to be the new financial system in the next five years, there's not much we can do to stop it, but there's going to be a ridiculous amount of wealth being transferred into this new system and all the other crypto projects that have laid the foundation and infrastructure for this. And yeah, I'm here to better understand the technological potential of all these networks. But I'm also here to make money, and if anyone tells you different, they're either lying or already have a lot of money. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this short little video. I just wanted to take a bit of time and share with you guys about how huge this news could be. It's honestly what a lot of us who have been in Quant for a minute now have been waiting for. I'm really excited to see what Quant's got in store for 2022, because 2021 was already quite a ride. I honestly think in 2022, we'll see Quant and Overledger get adopted at a more rapid pace once it's fully live on mainnet through some of their partnerships, since they gain a lot of exposure being partnered with Oracle and AWS, where they've got hundreds of thousands of clients that they'll be getting exposure for their solutions to. 
And the little hints I've covered today about interoperable CBDCs just seem too closely related to what Quant offers as a solution that it's hard for me not to draw the connection lines once I see it. So I hope you all had a great holiday. And remember, if you haven't already, show some love, hit that like and subscribe and turn that ringer on if you liked what you saw. And check me out on some of my other content platforms. You can always keep up and connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. My DMs are pretty much always open. And check out some more of my fundamental analysis articles on Medium, all at Tokenizer. And for those of you who don't have the time to read, I've got a Spotify podcast just for you guys at Tokenize TV. But yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.